I'm Julie Wood from the Charles River Watershed Association. I'm going to talk a little bit about what is a watershed and what does a watershed organization do. We're here on the banks of the beautiful Charles River. Many of you may be wondering what is a watershed? A watershed, despite having water in the name, is actually an area of land that surrounds a water body. And when rainwater falls on any of this land, it will eventually drain down into a specific water body. The Charles River watershed is located solely in Massachusetts. The Charles River starts in Hopkinton, Massachusetts and discharges to Boston Harbor in Boston. And the area of the watershed, the land surrounding the river, is 308 square miles. The Charles River Watershed Association was an organization formed in 1965 out of a group of concerned citizens to look at issues impacting the Charles River, specifically with the focus of protecting and restoring the Charles with a focus on the watershed. So when these citizens started this organization, the Charles River was deplorably dirty. We've made a lot of progress since then, but we still have a long way to go to fully restore the Charles. One of the great things about a watershed organization is that we can take a watershed view and not be bound by political boundaries, which often conflict with natural boundaries. In the 308 square miles of the Charles River watershed, there are 35 different Massachusetts municipalities. Each municipality has their own relationship to the river. As a watershed organization, we take the watershed view and look at how each of those ind individual municipalities, individual residents, and their actions may affect the river. So essentially, we're the eyes and the ears of the river. One of the main focuses at our watershed organization is to conduct our own sound science and research. Um, and in our field science program, we've also had the benefit of engaging a lot of our watershed residents in our scientific investigations. So we have a robust, what we call a citizen science program. Um, we have a volunteer monthly monitoring program, which has been going on since 1995. We were one of the first groups in the country to start out uh, using volunteer citizens to conduct scientific research and water quality monitoring. And these volunteers go out once a month at 6 a.m. on a Tuesday morning and collect water samples at 35 sites throughout the watershed. So we get, once a month, we get a great snapshot of what the water quality is. The fact that we've been doing this every month since 1995 means that we have the most comprehensive data set on Charles River water quality of anyone anywhere in the world. We've learned a ton through this sampling program. And a lot of the cleanup efforts that have occurred in the Charles River are because of water quality problems that have been identified by our volunteers. We also engage volunteers in what's called biological or benthic macroinvertebrate monitoring, where volunteers go out and collect little bugs from various streams and spots along the main stem of the Charles River, look at the community of bugs they've identified, and by looking at the specific community of bugs, we get a good idea of the habitat quality in this particular stretch. So between those two monitoring programs, we get a really good, robust picture of the water quality in the Charles. We use our water quality data to then guide our advocacy work as well as our restoration work. So we get a better understanding of where we have problems, what the problems might be, and where we need to focus our efforts to improve things. Another way that the Charles River Watershed Association works with citizens is to educate and empower citizens to take action in their own communities 
um, actions that may improve the Charles River watershed, the Charles River as a whole. Um, one example of this is we work closely with a group of citizens that are very concerned about invasive weed growth. Um, there's a stretch of the Charles that's behind a dam where the river moves very slowly, it widens out, um, it's what we call an impounded stretch because it's behind the dam. And because of this uh, habitat of slow moving water, um, some spots are relatively shallow and heat up in the summer. Um, invasive weeds have been allowed to proliferate. Um, and the citizens in the community surrounding this stretch are very concerned about this overgrowth of invasive aquatic weeds in this stretch. We've partnered closely with this group, um, educated them on different things that can be done as far as reducing nutrient pollution into the Charles, um, which nutrient pollution allows plants to grow out of control and out of balance. Um, educating folks on what they can do as far as removal and management. We also, through this program, mobilize over 300 volunteers every year to go out on canoes and actually pull out or harvest these invasive weeds. We also work with various individuals or individual communities um, on advocacy projects, commenting on um, development or construction projects to make them more river friendly. Um, one thing that's exciting about environmental work is that a lot of decisions are made at a very local level, um, which is a very accessible level of government for an average citizen to become engaged in. So we like to work with citizens who are interested um, and empower them to become involved at their local level, just working with their municipal government, whether it's joining a conservation commission or speaking at a conservation commission meeting or speaking with their own level of local government um, and just asking them what are they doing in their town, asking the question, what are, what are we doing in our town to protect the Charles River?